for the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for more updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. I'm Nitin Gokhale. With me today is a special guest, Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas, Hardeep Puri. And we are going to ask him about India's energy transition as well as the challenges in the current environment of high crude oil prices. How is he managing that? Welcome to this program, Minister. Thank uh, you. Uh, well, uh, I'm not going to go into the pricing or the supply of crude oil immediately, but the new hydrogen mission, that uh, green hydrogen mission that the Prime Minister has announced or the cabinet has cleared. Uh, tell us a little more about it, how we <coughs> plan to transit. In short, green hydrogen is the fuel of the future. Green hydrogen, in my view, represents the quantum jump in science and the related technology uh, to take you to an entirely new uh, uh, arena. In the Indian context, I think the Prime Minister was very far-sighted addressing the uh, nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort on 15th August 2021. He announced the commencement of a national hydrogen mission in mission mode. Yes. He situated it in terms of climate, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what we were required to do as a nation. But today, rather, I would say this has been a very uh, you know, a happy time because the cabinet has approved the uh, policy. Yes. Now, let me go away from that into what is green hydrogen. Sure. <laughs> uh, as the name suggests, what you require is an electrolyzer. Mm -hmm. Electrolyzers, as, I, as far as I know, come using at least two or three different technologies. We are in terms of collaboration, mm. Indian companies have tied up with every electrolyzer manufacturing, any any company manufacturing electrolyzer, sure. using all technologies. Right. There are three all actually, three. which are yeah. two more uh, mm. prominent than the other. Yeah. What you need to do is to take electricity mm -hmm. from a green source. Yes. Solar would be Solar, green. Yeah. Renewables basically. Yeah. And we are one country in the world which has demonstrated that you can bring the cost of a unit down from 25 cents to 3 cents. Mm. It's gone up later for other reasons. Yes. Mm. You need cheap green energy mm. and you need an electrolyzer sure. and you need water. Right. Now, if you set up these um, green hydrogen facilities along the coast, there's no shortage of water Absolutely. and people are already doing it. They've oh, already, yeah. in anticipation of the policy, gone ahead. Yes. In my view, green hydrogen does not lend itself to storage and transportation mm. for a number of reasons. Yes. It can be. Yeah. It can be stored. It can it's, be it's transported. Expensive. Yeah, at the moment. But yeah. why are you wanting to take an additional liability or an enhanced cost? Right. So my submission is that green hydrogen will succeed best mm. where you have a demand, mm -hmm. where you have the capacity to produce, and a ready clientele for consumption. And I think India satisfies those three conditions. And I think India is catching the curve very early. That's well, you know, this is the kind of, it's like drones. Either right. you are there or you're not there. Right. Because it will be, uh, before you can wink, uh, you know, bat an eyelid. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody has produced it and is, mm -hmm. is marketing it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Our private sector was very quick off the mark. Mm -hmm. There was money flowing in from outside. More money will come in. And I hate to adopt a somewhat parochial <laughs> stance on this. I think the success of green hydrogen will come from our refineries. Right. I mean, I saw no. the message saying <clears throat> NTPCL is doing something. That will happen. But the bulk of it. Sure. You are today consuming 5 million barrels of crude a day. Yeah. You refine it into that. Correct. Well, the minute you get large amounts of green hydrogen, I just see what you can do to uh, uh, 
replace that. I mean, you can't replace it entirely because your economy is firing on all cylinders. So your consumption will go up from 5 million barrels a day to 6, 6 and a half, 7. But you can start using green hydrogen in greater quantity. Right. Now, we started by saying we'll have what? 5 million metric, metric tons, tons by 2030. Right. I think it's a grossly uh, underestimate, underestimate, very conservative thing. I think you'll have three times the amount sure. if you get your act together. Yes. When I was talking soon after uh, being associated with the petroleum and natural gas portfolio, mm -hmm. two statements. One, during the course of a conversation, virtual, with the US Energy Secretary, right. Jennifer Greenholm, she said, we are moving to one, one, one. Mm -hmm. So I really lost. I said, what is one? One mm -hmm. kilo mm -hmm. for one dollar right. for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Today, if you can get the cost of green energy through solar down mm -hmm. a little, or you devise a system of incentives, mm -hmm. and you've got your electrolyzer production, mm -hmm. I think it actually is doable. Because when I ask people, there'll be $10 pair, $2 pair, but you know, just look at the revolutionary change you'll have. It will bring Suddenly us. everybody, not only ships, refineries producing, refineries using, mm -hmm. aircraft, Right. Vehicles, yes. You know, most of these uh, modern uh, automobile manufacturers have divided themselves into two. The other guys are going into electric, and the guys are going to hire. The smart ones are going into both. Both. Yeah. Now, electric vehicles is also fantastic. I mean, it it's a great. To see. But you know, if your grid is not green, mm. then electric vehicles also, at the end of the day, your climate-associated uh, commitments, etc. But I think fascinating things are happening. That's right. Actually, the transition from fossil fuel to green energy. Will absolutely. Be. I mean, fossil mm. fuels also has very grading. I mean, you started burning, uh, you know, wood, the charcoal and all that. Yes. Uh, and then you, I mean, but that is the story of the human evolution. Also, then you've got from primitive, modes, primitive yeah. modes to, you know, feudal and then modern sure. uh, modes and the technology has defined the stage you are in. Right. I mean, from the caveman using, uh, you know, <laughs> firewood, firewood or lighting uh, yeah. the firewood with from stone and a splint. So I mean, this is this is a story and this is a mind-boggling change. Well, that's true. But in the short run, uh, just to look at the current uh, scenario in uh, the oil sector, petroleum and oil sector. Uh, where are we? I mean, now, uh, you know, the West has always been uh, a little upset that we are using more and more I'm, Russian I'm oil. Not, I'm not aware of the rest being upset. There's some <laughs> part, some of your distinguished friends in the fourth estate yes. who claim to represent the interests of the West. Yeah. They were saying, don't you have a moral compunction exactly. to... <laughs> so I said my moral compunction is to my 1.35 or 1.36 billion users. Right. Um, six crore people go to the bunk every day to fill up. Right. What do you tell those six crore? No, I want to be moral. Therefore, the I won't buy from Russia. <laughs> so that the other guys who are selling me yeah. and already making huge profit, they can make 100 times more profit. Sure. This is asinine. Yeah, absolutely. Completely asinine. True. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if India buys from, I'm not talking about Russia. Mm -hmm. We used to buy from 27 sources. We are buying now from 39 sources. Mm -hmm. How does it make any difference? If I don't buy from Russia, if nobody buys from Russia, the price of oil will shoot up $250. Absolutely. So I think they have realized that. And I don't think that I, I know of anyone who's just told me mm -hmm. to my face that don't buy. Right. They used to buy seven times more. Yes. They're still buying. By yeah. the way, they're still well, you buying. You said that, I think, yeah. in that interview. They're, they're still buying more. Yeah. But now I think we have uh, switched. They are our uh, greater supply, the bigger supply. No, suppliers. but that is mm -hmm. a function of the, the market. Uh, the market. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, uh, uh, you're probably right, in the last month of December. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the market will buy, uh, will determine who you from whom you buy with. Right. You have long-term arrangements with the some countries in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. You have you buying spot to the Russians if you mm -hmm. enter into a long-term arra arrangement. Mm -hmm. Many years, Saudi Arabia, UAE were the major suppliers. Sure. Now, sure. Uh, Iraq is a very important supplier. Right. I think in between, we started buying more from Russia, but then the Iraqis were giving us better terms. Mm -hmm. This is a market for this keep, that. Yeah, that keeps happening. But uh, just one, of, uh, one more question on uh, the hydrogen or the transition, let's say, green energy. So uh, even your refineries are now uh, looking at uh, all this. I mean, we I think IOCL has already got two tie-ups. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ONGC has a tie-up with uh, uh, someone. Mm -hmm. All of them are getting into it. So don't worry. I mean, so I, I don't want to. I don't like to talk in terms of such assertive listing, but 
I think the green hydrogen mission, as we will show in the coming six months, mm -hmm. will be to a large extent spearheaded by the uh, this sector. It will be, in fact, uh, and you have an important role to play there. So, on that note, let me thank you for your time. Uh, it's been wonderful as usual. And uh, like we've done in the past, I think this is going to give me a lot of uh, new insights and our viewers a new insights. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.